Thank you, Mike, and uh, I appreciate the ADI for giving us this opportunity to present to everyone today, and thank you to all the attendees that are joining us. Today, we're going to go over, um, you know, how to select the correct RJ45 modular plug or connector and terminate and test your RJ45 category cables properly. We'll get right into it. So I want to give you a little bit of a background, some of you who may not be familiar with Platinum Tools. Platinum Tools has been around for over 20 years, uh, founded in 1997. Uh, we first uh, are, first started developing products uh, in 97, mostly around the RJ45 connectors. Um, we had, you know, one of our main goals was to source and um, develop uh, products that will prep in, for insulations, uh, ham termina terminations, and test, test cable and wire and um, ultimately be able to deliver these in a fast and quality manner. So um, we make a full, uh, we make a full catalog, catalog of products that provide a wide spectrum of solutions from connectivity to test and measurement. Our connectivity products include a full suite of connectors from all types of cat, uh, category cables. Most of this pre uh, presentation today will, will be examining the connectivity and test categories and how we got to where we are today. We have developed many solutions that have um, altered the way cables are installed in, for modern networks. Our hand tools are designed to make installations and terminations easy. The quality of our hand tools are ideal for pros who take their job seriously and require high performance and ease of use. <clears throat> we have a complete, uh, complete line of structured wiring products also that deliver solid support to patch panels, connectivity of all types for weather and environments. Um, our cable management products uh, can be, cable management products can be a challenge for installations. We have developed a complete line of products to keep networks organize, organized while protecting the, the cables and the installation. Our uh, pioneer product, the EZRJ45, was, was so, uh, created to solve many problems during installation and termination of uh, category cable. Um, it has been, it, it had become an industry standard and is a really, it really helped drive the future of platinum tool, tools. Um, before RJ40, easy RJ40, uh, before the easy RJ45, terminations of standard modular connection connectors required great precision and experience. With the traditional standard connectors, uh, laying out your conductors to the right color code, they must be trimmed half an inch from the end of the jacket and then inserted into a connector. <clears throat> you hope they stay in the right order, but often um, conductors one and two and seven and eight will flip. Loss of time is a loss of money. And when bad connections happen, the installers must cut the wires and re-terminate. Platinum Tools identified this problem and developed the Easy RJ45 pass-through connector. We wanted to make it easier for installers to increase their accuracy and decrease the potential for failure rates. By adding the holes to the front of the connector, you now are able to push the, push the, the longer conductors out the front end, verify all eight conductors in the right order before the termination. This process makes it easier to place the, the twist less than a half inch from the point of termination and keeps the cable jacket past the strain of latch. When first introduced, experienced um, installers claimed they didn't need this type of process, but soon found out how valuable this would be to, to train their employees and ensure every installation was right the first time. Again, less time to train and easy to get it done the, right the first time. High voltage technicians who were move, uh, moving into the low voltage installations were empowered by the Easy RJ45 as they requ required less training time and did not need years of experience to get started. <clears throat> Experienced technician installers literally see uh, literally see more value in the Easy RJ45 because um, previously they had to look through the connector to verify the color codes, and this was a, a strain on the eyes, to say the least. In the last 20 years, Platinum Tools has seen an evolution in network demands from pure data and now streaming video. Whether the installer is setting up a home audio, video entertainment network, or network of PoE cameras, connections have a decreasing margin of error 
and it has become increasingly challenging to provide connectivity that will support today's high speeds and wide bandwidth requirements. Not only did uh, speed requirements increase, but so did the cable sizes. Cables uh, must now be able to handle at least 10, 10 gig and function seamlessly. To keep, keep up, cable manufacturers are producing cables, larger cables with varying internal dimensions. Diameters of the inside jacket and the conductors are becoming more and more um, inconsistent. This creates a major compatibility challenge. Many of our te technical support calls come in from installers who show up to job sites to terminate cable already installed and discover none of the connectors will fit. Both the, the jacket and the, the conductors insulation diameters are too large or sometimes too small. So what do they do? They call Platinum Tools um, for connector compatibility solutions. Fortunately, Platinum saw this change coming early on and developed a solution that revolutionized and made way for the new era of network speed and cable compatibility. Um, the Easy EX RJ45 connector was developed featuring a new high-low stagger conductor layout, accommodating for large cables, diameter sizes, and decreasing potential connection failures. We also introduced a new form of crimp tool featuring an interchangeable die and other easy to use features. It's all about the stagger. Um, by adjusting the position of the conductors inside the connector, we made room for larger cable diameters. By changing the position of the side by side, side by side with a maximum insulation diameter of four thousandths of an inch to a high low stagger, your maximum insulation diameter jumps to 53 thousandths of an inch. Not only does this this um, accommodate the larger cable conductor, diam conductor diameters, but it also ensures that conductor, con conductors are equal from each other. This is a very important and new integrated, this, is, this was impossible without our new integrated load bar. It's all about the crosstalk. Near and far in crosstalk is a problem, problem that happens when electromagnetic interference from one unshielded twisted pair to another twisted pair normally runs in parallel to each other. When cables are upgraded from one gig to 10 gig to accommodate the new need for speed, this introduces more potential for crosstalk issues. By staggering the alignment of the conductors in the EZEX RJ45, we have allowed for a maximum amount of distance between each conductor centering and align them decreasing crosstalk. In lab testing using high-end testers like certifiers, the EZX RJ45 has been approved for 10 gig speeds, confirming it is ideal solution not only for cable compatibility, but to meet the needs for increasing streaming and PoE demands. Many IP cameras and switches in today's market are designed with no relief built into the back wall of the, the jack or port to accept the nose of the locking tab on an RJ45 connector. This prevents the connector from having connectivity and locking in. Not good. The, the solution that, uh, that we designed is the new EZEX RJ45 with the, the nose. <clears throat> we removed that and we did it. We solved the problem. In IP cameras, switches, and other um, certain uh, concerns was uh, being the, I, the PoE compliant. It is not a problem with the EZX RJ45. It is PoE and PoE Plus rated by UL and is the only pass-through connector on the market with this rating. Another um, big advantage here is, as I mentioned before, we received a lot of calls from, from seemingly hopeless installers who have arrived to a job with a, a set of connectors, only to find out that they do not fit the, they don't fit the conductors within the category cable, even though they were supposed to fit. For an example, example scenario would go something like this. A category cable is being pulled by an electro, uh, electrical contractor who is also laying in all the 110 and 220 uh, volt cabling. Once the walls are up and the finished work is done, the low voltage installer is called in to come in and hook up all the, the cables. As for the cables, they, they know it is a CAT6. The low voltage installer arrives with the CAT6 connectors he had left over from his last job. He starts um, terminating the process only to discover the CAT6 cable is, is too big. The conductors won't pass through the front end of the, the connector. 
With a few bits of information, we can create a cable to connector compatibility connection with the EZEX RJ45. By verifying the cable di uh, dimensions, the cable jacket um, diameter, the insulation diameter, and the gauge, we can provide the right connector for the job. We recommend um, you carry a jar of each of our three sizes, the EZX 38, 44, and 48. If you have each one of these connectors on the job, it'll take care of 85% of, um, of cables you, you go to a job with unknown cable. The EZX connector comes with three sizes, a full range from all the way from uh, 33 thousandths of an inch to 48 thousandths of an inch. The 38 the EZX38 connector typically fits on 5E cables and some small CAT6 cables. The EZX44 ideally works with CAT6 and small CAT6A cables. And finally, the 48 is recommended for CAT6A and some larger CAT6 cabling. <clears throat> with this launch of the this new connector, we took the opportunity to launch a new style of crimp tool. The XO crimp frame with the EXO die uh, transfers the way installers uh, terminate connections. Now installers are able to easily insert the connector into the XO crimp frame and hear it lock in place. With other tools, you must hold the connector in place while the cable and pushing the connector tightly against the front, and this often can cause a shifting and poor uh, crimp. So the lock ensures the connector is, co is connected um, in place correctly for the contact drivers and are, is in precise each and every time. Each cut is clean and flush. Also, uh, this tool highlights a, a, a gun style lock, which is great for, um, so the tool doesn't come in the unlock position in a toolbox or, or whenever the tool is dropped. Uh, customers really enjoy that feature set. It's also great for lefties. Um, the, the dies are interchangeable. So again, you have dies for R Easy RJ45, Easy X RJ45, and the Easy RJ1211. Uh, connectors, um, and you can switch the die around to work for lefty or righty. Another great tool that we have designed is uh, for uh, identifying the right connector for your cable is the our connector selector guide. You can find this on our website. Um, the link is listed ab above. Um, all you have to do here is you put in the cable jacket OD, you put in the measurements uh, and then you put the insulation diameter. This is the, the can be the trickier uh, measurement to find because sometimes the cable specs don't always have it on their spec sheets. But then you put down if it's shielded or non or solid or stranded. And as you can see here to the right, um, it will display the right connectors for that cable that you're trying to terminate. We've also um, provided here a comparison so you can see the difference between the Easy RJ45 and the Easy EX RJ45. As I talked about earlier, you can see the straight alignment for the Easy RJ45 and the Easy EX is in that high low stagger. Again, we, like I talked about earlier, it helps improve crosstalk and also allows those larger conductors to fit into the RJ45. Uh, we recommend the Easy EX for all PoE and data applications, works up to 10 gig. Um, and it works on 5E, 6, 6A, and even some 7. Um, the cable ranges, you can see the much larger sizes between the two, where traditionally in the past our easy uh, connectors would only work on Cat 5E cables and, and smaller Cat 6s. So there was that gap where we weren't able to, to work on the larger Cat 6 cables or the, large, or the Cat 6As. So the EZX gives us that uh, ability to, to do all the different categories. Uh, currently at ADI, we have all um, the Easy RJ45 products still available. It's a, a strong seller. Still, people a lot of people still love and continue to use the Easy RJ45. But you know, as times are changing, like I talked about earlier, we are definitely in, um, in you know recommending and suggesting people that are putting in the the POE applications to start trans. Trans, uh, transferring over to the EZEX to make sure that uh, your connect connector meets the meets, meet, meets the needs that you have out there. And here you can see all the part numbers and listed that you can purchase these products through ADI. Next, I'm going to go over um, just the basics on how to terminate shielded and unshielded cabling, category cabling. So on a, a non-shielded um, UTP cable, um, basic steps here. 
Um, obviously, you're, so we're going to use a make sure we use a strain relief, relief here. Strain reliefs are great because they can help support bend radius. Also, they're aesthetically a little better. They protect the tab. A lot of people like using strain reliefs. We have strain reliefs in multiple different colors from clear, white, and blue. So here, what you'd want to do is you want to first slide on the, the you definitely don't want to forget to slide on the uh, strain relief first. Uh, then the next step you would do is you would um, take your cable, measure back about an inch and a half to two inches, and strip it back with your um, whichever uh, uh, cable stripper you have. Uh, next step, you want to make sure you keep that, that piece of the jacket that you stripped off because you can use this tool, tool later on in the process. Here you can see we're, we're separating the pairs from each other um, and cut away if there's a, a pull cord or spines. And then you'll, um, you can actually unwind the, the pairs using that jacket like we're doing in this image here. And then another process is take, you can even take that uh, piece of the jacket and comb out the comb out each one of the pairs. And this is great because it, it prevents any damage to the pairs. Because sometimes if you're using a pair of scissors or a screwdriver or something like that, you can nick the conductors and that's definitely not good for installations. All right, uh, next step. So next you're gonna want to align your conductors in the right um, color scheme. Um, here I've listed two of the color schemes. You have the TI-568A and TI-568B. Um, we're doing the, the B uh, standard here. And what you'll want to do is once you lay them out in the right order, you're going to want to cut them at a slight angle. And this is going to help when you're sliding the, the conductors into the connector. All right, so next step. So when we're uh, going to take, the, you're going to take your connector, you're going to have it where the, the bottom where you kind of see here, there's, a, there's a, a number on there that's the 44. So you're identifying, you know, this connector is the 44 going to have that facing you and you're going to slide those conductors straight through. There's channels that they'll, they'll fit in really easily. Now, if you're working with a connector that might be the wrong size, you'll definitely, if you feel any type of, uh, um, um, any type of movement, any type of movement where it's not allowing you to pass them through, you might want to move up a size or if there's, there, if there's too much room, you might want to move down a size to like the 38. But here we're working with the 44 connector. We're going to slide it in, and you're going to push it all the way back in where it seats that, that jacket firmly within the connector. And then you're also going to meet that strain relief together with that connector before the, term, before the actual uh, crimping process. So here on the next step, we are going to take that um, connector, and we are going to slide it into the tool. Like I had mentioned earlier, with this tool, it has a great locking um, uh, feature set. So you'll hear the connector actually click and lock into the tool. And this is great. So if guys are on ladders or anything like that, they can do it in one one hand operation. Once you have it clicked in, you can walk up the ladder and crimp it down um, one handed. But the, the, the big key is that you know that it's always going to be in the right position and it's going to be uh, crimping into those contact drivers properly and it's going to trim off uh, in one flush cut. So the next step here, um, uh, obviously you're seeing the, the finished product. You're going to see the, the front of the connector is a nice uh, flush trim on it, uh, met up with the strain relief. It, looks, it has a really good presentation. Um, you're going to take your cable tester, whichever kind of cable verifier you have to be able to test out the pins, plug it into your tester and the, the remote and the, the main unit because you want to test both ends and make sure that they're both wired up properly and the same. Very easy. So the next uh, process we're going to go over, you know, how to how to terminate a shielded uh, category cable, and we're going to use again the 44 size, and we're doing an external ground connector. So first off, just like the um, the last step with the strain relief, I'm here because this is an external ground connector. We're going to slide an RJ45 boot. Again, this is going to help with. Uh, you know, bend radius, protecting that connector. Also, people like to color code them. So you can do that with multiple different colors for the, the RJ45 boots. Uh, so slide that on. Again, strip back the cable one, one and a half inch to two inches uh, using your cable um, uh, stripper. Here, um, you're gonna pull away if there's any uh, foil. Um, you're gonna pull away, um, if you have a drain wire, 
um, you can keep that there and you can just rip away the foil. Now, if there's no drain wire, but you do have the foil, you would want to use that foil as a ground later on in the process. Uh, so again, take that uh, piece of jacket that you stripped away. You can use that again to uh, separate your pairs. And, uh, and here in this next uh, slide, we're showing how to take that drain wire, wrap it around the jacket of your, of your cable for setting the, the ground. Now uh, you can take a somewhat of a newer product for us that we've been selling uh, that really helps with shielded cable is our copper foil strip. And, and it's got an adhesive on it. Um, you take that adhesive strip and you put it right over top of that drain wire, wrap it around. So you're creating a, a good bond, a good ground for between the cable and the connector. So here, like I was uh, mentioning earlier, you're gonna take that, uh, that piece of the jacket and separate your pairs. And you're gonna, again, you can use that tool to smooth out the pairs because you're gonna have to comb, comb out the, the conductors. And again, you'd wanna use that, uh, that, that piece of the, the jacket. It will safely uh, comb them out straight for you. So again, here, you're gonna now, you're gonna have to lay them in the right um, alignment. Again, we're doing the TI-568B in this, in this procedure here. You can then cut it out. And now you take it with the connector and you're going to slide it um, easily through the connector. And you can see that it has the external ground on there. You're going to make sure you, you set, seat the, the, the jacket all the way into the connector um, for your termination, getting ready for your termination. So next you're going to take your XO crimp frame, um, plug the connector directly into the tool and uh, in one flush trim, um, trim off those conductors and seat the connector. Next you'll need a uh, external crimp tool for your uh, ground crimping tool. Um, this will properly uh, seat the, uh, the ground onto the backside of the connector around that uh, the foil strip that you added to the cable or the drain wire and securing your ground. And then you'll slide the, then you're going to go ahead and slide your RJ45 boot up the, the cable over the connector. And again, you're going to want to make sure you use a cable tester to properly test both ends to make sure that uh, continuity wise you've uh, aligned uh, your, your termination properly. So next up, so cable testing. So when we're going to run cable testing for your RJ45 connector, um, there's a few things of importance. Um, the number one issue found with faulty Ethernet cable is with improper termination. Um, typically, whenever there's a, a fault in a cable, um, any random issues, you're first going to want to test your the terminations on there, possibly even re-terminate. But you're going to want to make sure you check those terminations with a cable tester. And having a, uh, the right category cable tester is critical for installing uh, proper Ethernet cabling. Uh, so what can a uh, cable tester do for you? Um, some of the main things it's going to do for you is going to test the termination on both ends like we talked about. It's going to be looking for a few things. It's going to be looking for opens, shorts, miswires, reversals, and split pairs. Um, it can give you distance to cable and distance to fault. This is very important for troubleshooting and locating problems. So having the right tester that can have this feature is, is a big, uh, big importance. Helping to locate and uh, locate faults and unlabeled cables. Uh, there's a lot of times where you can have a tester where it'll test out for, to a break or an open on the line. It can test out to a short. Uh, and you can just speed up your troubleshooting uh, time on a job by having the right cable tester. And the big one, uh, unlabeled cables. Uh, so, so often technicians will not label the cables properly or else you come into a job where someone else was on the job before you and didn't label the cables where they're going. You have a couple different options. You can use a tone generator in a cable tester to tone them out with a probe and find, locate them that way. Or you can have a, a cable tester that has identification remotes where you can plug the remotes into uh, wall plates or patch panels to figure out where they're running to and uh, using the tester makes it really fast and easy to locate them. And lastly, um, you can tell you what the network traffic, what your cable can handle for network traffic, what kind of speeds that cable can handle. 
So types of uh, cable testers out there um, you'll find on the market, uh, cable verification. So what a cable verification tool or verifier is also known as, um, it will do a, a wire map. So as you see the images down below, you'll see how I have a pass and, and then a fail result. What you're seeing here is the, um, you know, see pairs one and two, three and six, four and five. So it's just showing you that both ends are, are wired up properly the same on both sides. So they're both wired up in TI-568B. And then on the failure one, you're seeing here that on pairs three and six, you have a fault um, on, on, on three and six, they're crossed. Um, so you got, somebody's got to go back in there and re-terminate those ends on, on that cable. So it's an easy way to detect that kind of a problem. Also, it's um, really nice when you're able to w figure out what, where the cable's going. Um, you have that, again, like I said, like tone tracing, you can uh, send a tone down it or have identification remotes. In the image to the right, you can see a cable tester there where it has a, a, a testing remote with an identification number. Now we have some remotes that go up to eight different locations and test, or we have remotes that go up to 20 different locations. So if you have multiple different cables running in a, in a premise, you can um, use the one with up to 20, which is really helpful. Um, and then you can also find out um, on like, uh, for figuring out the distance of cable or distance to a fault, TDR or capacitance. Uh, when you're running a, with a cable tester that's TDR is really nice because you're able to see the distance to an open. And then um, and the nice thing on the tester like this here, you can see each one of the pairs. So if there's only a pair, if there's only a, a cut on one of the pairs, it'll tell you exactly the distance to that one, uh, the cut on that one pair which comes in really handy, or the short on that one pair. Uh, we also have uh, capacitance testers. We're running length on capacitance. And what that, what that does is it, um, it will only give you length to an open or a break. It doesn't give you uh, distance to a short. So if you want short, you want a tester with TDR. And these ones typically cost, these are, you know, usually run the ranges of around $50 to a couple hundred dollars. It just depends on all the feature sets that you want. So another type of a cable tester is an Ethernet speed certification tool, or also known as a cable qualifi qualification tool. Um, what these testers will do, it, it will give you, tell you what the network traffic speed can, what this cable can handle. If it can handle 10, 100, or, or, or 1 gig uh, speed, it'll be able to tell you that. You can test for each one of those. Um, on this one here, um, this one's testing to an IEEE standard called 802.3 AB, which is basically sending data packets over the cable up to one gigabit in speed. It's a data transmission test. And off to the left, you see a, a screenshot of a, a test result. Here, you'll see where it's giving you, um, it'll give you the length because, you know, these testers will also give you all the cable verification functions like the testers I showed you pre on the previous slide. It'll do all those same features and functions, but then it adds uh, skew, signal noise ratio, and BERT. Uh, skew testing is measuring the twist in the pairs, so making sure that you know the pairs are um, twisted properly and, and there's no certain bends or anything like that. Signal noise ratio is actually testing the noise over the cable, so if it's getting, picking up any noise from maybe some other um, electrical lines on the premise, it can pick up that so you can be able to pick up if there's any signal noise uh, issues there. In the big test that it does, you'll see in the bottom side uh, where it says bit air, bit, BERT test and it says zero error, that's bit error rate test. That's the big test that we're doing on this. We're actually sending the data, data packets um, in multiple different sizes um, over the cable up to one gig. So this is a very important test here. It's like on this one here on the screen, it's showing you it's doing a 100 meg test over a Cat5 cable. But again, it'll test cables from Cat5, Cat5e, Cat6, Cat6a, Cat7, if you wanna make sure and verify it can handle up to one gigabit in speed. And the other big thing that these testers do is that they provide professional doc test documentation because um, so many times when um, going out to jobs, uh, customers will want to know, okay, what cables did you install? Did they pass? What, what, what speeds can they handle? Um, this type of a tester will give you that type of information, which is very vital to um, um, having proper tester out there. And these costs, these are um, probably about double the price of the most expensive uh, cable uh, uh, verifier out there. You know, usually prices will range somewhere around uh, 
you know, seventeen hundred dollars, two thousand dollars, somewhere right around that price point. And a lot of times, these testers too will have added active network capabilities where they can ping IP addresses, port discovery. So it, it's nice to have those because it eliminates having to pull laptop out, laptop out on the job. And then the next uh, type of cable tester out there, your, your traditional cable certification tool. So these type of tools are, you know, analog RF measurements, uh, frequencies, they're testing against uh, TIA or ISO standards. You typically find these in uh, new cable installations and somewhere where you're going to need to have the cable manufacturer's warranty. So if working on a job where the customer's insisting on having uh, cable warranty documentation taken care of, uh, you're going to want to have to, you're going to want to get one of these traditional cable certification tools and these can cost a lot of money. So in our industry, typically in the security industry, a lot of guys will, you know, they might have one within a large company and everyone shares it or else they, they rent them out. Um, so, uh, but uh, they can be very vital depending on the job that you're working on. Uh, when would you use a cable verifier? Again, basically it went every test, every test, the, every, every termination that you're doing when you're making patch cables, when you're, you're making it, you're putting any cable runs into a back to a patch panel, um, or, you know, you're doing the RJ45 modular plugs, you're going to want to test each drop, each drop before you plug it into the, to a device, you're going to want to test it and make sure it's, it's pinned out properly. Uh, it's very important. Um, can, can help you out and uh, eliminate any callbacks later in the future. So why would uh, why would you use an Ethernet speed certification tool? Uh, basically, in like today's with today and the higher data requirements of, of, of network equipment, installers need to show their customers that uh, the, the cable they installed can handle the data demands. And and also basically at the end of the job, they need to have that documentation to show you know, what they've done, what you've uh, uh, tested to. And you don't always, you don't need um, a, quite, I would say in our industry, in the security industry, I would say, you know, 90% of the time you don't need to have a full blown cable certifier, but you do, it, it, you do and it helps to have a, a tester like this that can give you the test reports at the end of the job. And really what it does is it gets you paid faster. Um, if you're able to hand the, the your customer a, a detailed report with, your site information with uh, your contractor information. Um, it's just more professional and um, it, it really can turn around and get paid faster and this tester will pay for itself in the long run. So Platinum Tools has a good arrangement, a good lineup of, of different types of cable testers, everything from, you know, voice, video and data, things that will test uh, ethernet cables, coaxial cables, telephone cables. We have butt sets, telephone test sets. Uh, cable tracers, you know, tone and probes for everything from like our Ethernet speed certifier we just talked about. Then we have uh, um, cable and network uh, network analyzers like our net prowler, which will actually do all the pinging up IP addresses, port discovery. You can plug it into a system and it can uh, map out all the IPs it sees on the network and it'll tell you, you know, how all the IP cameras it sees on your network. That's a great feature set of that tool. So there's a lot of different testers uh, in our portfolio you can take a look at. Here I just put up a quick comparison chart so you can see the different levels of testers we have. Every, everything starting from the left um, to the right, you'll see um, our land seeker, which is like a basic LED light uh, display, you know, tell you continuity wise, it's a basic uh, verifier. Then our new Mapmaster Mini, which is a small pocket size RJ45 tester that has a LCD display, which is great. And then moving all the way up to our net chaser. So some tools here. So you, if you're looking for a particular type of a tester, here's some um, good information for you to identify which tester work, would work best for you. So now that's pretty much everything in my presentation. I'm just going to go over a couple of things quick before we open up for the Q and A. Um, uh, we have some sales contacts if you need if Eastern region, uh, Peter Schofield, uh, he's new with our company, but his contact information is here in our central U.S. region, actually, which runs from the Carolinas over to Texas, uh, which is Vince Spadaro. Um, he's another new member of our team. He's been with us about six months. And then Andre Perchich, um, he is uh, our Western U.S. regional, and I 
I'm sure a lot of you guys know, know Andre. He's been with us for a while. And then if you have any other general sales questions or technical support um, questions, you can uh, email us at info at platinumtools.com. And here's another little bit uh, to help out. Uh, we have, this is a, our regional, uh, our regions by sales reps. We have uh, full coverage throughout the U.S. and Canada. So if uh, you need to, you would like to contact one of our reps and uh, get with them to get a demo of any of our products, please feel free to contact us and we'll, we'll align you with our, our sales reps in the field. So next, I'm, I'm going to introduce uh, Mike Aceto. We're going to get into the Q&A. Um, Mike is the ADI General Manager for Enterprise and Connectivity. Uh, Mike, are you there? Uh, I am, Jason. Can you hear me okay? I can. Thank you. Okay. Uh, thank you, Jason. That was uh, great information um, for everybody. Uh, good afternoon. Um, as Jason said, I'm the General Manager for Enterprise Connectivity, or as some would call the Datacom Group here at ADI. Um, we have a uh, a national sales team that supports the Datacom business um, and vendors such as Platinum Tools, which is a great partner for us. Um, my team will be reaching out to those people who have attended the uh, the webinar just to follow up and see if you need any additional um, information or samples or whatnot. Um, and we're really, when, when you think about what my team does, we are the uh, cable infrastructure team. So jack to the rack is kind of what we call ourselves. Uh, so anything in between. Uh, so connectors, tools, testers, um, cabling products, racks, cabinets, power cooling, that's kind of where we fall. Uh, and are here to help you and support um, the ADI offices around the country uh, and the ADI outside sales teams as well. So, um, you know, thanks, Joe. I saw that, that comment. Um, so that's what we're here for. Uh, once again, like I said, Platinum Tools is a huge partner for us. Uh, great information, great product. Uh, if you need anything, uh, you can uh, contact your local branch and they'll get you in touch with our EC reps. And, uh, you know, we can help support you from a technical perspective, uh, pricing, registrations, um, you know, product, uh, project design, anything you need. So um, thank you, Jason, for the, uh, for the, time and I'll uh, open up for Q&A for you.